Hi, welcome to the Fit and Healthy Today Show. And today's topic matter is on an amino acid called cysteine. Um, it's a uh, better form is actually referred to as inacetylcysteine, but cysteine is what is referred to as a non-essential amino acid, meaning the body takes uh, certain amino acids and vitamins and combines them in order to manufacture and make cysteine. But it's by no means a n <laughs> not essential to the body because without adequate amounts of cysteine, there's no way we could take the world's today's toxins and render them inert. So what it is, and you know, everything we look at as far as proteins are concerned or amino acids, we look at their uh, element components, which in this particular case is nitrogen, carbon, oxygen, and nitrogen, plus a hydrogen, what's called thiol group, uh, that makes it probably uh, one of the strongest antioxidants known to man. Um, when we look at the function of cysteine, cysteine is a higher quality source of a sulfur compound than garlic. Garlic is a very weak form. Um, the, thiol, um, the thiol that is found which, in attachment with the other elements um, helps to prevent oxidation of sensitive tissues, but it also renders, as I noted before, these chemical toxins that we get, petrochemical, medications, so on and so forth, it actually renders these toxic chemicals and carcinogens inert. That means it inactivates them. So with all the stuff that we've got going on in today's world, especially when it hits the liver, this particular amino acid renders them inert. Now, the derivatives, which mean um, the, the items that cysteine can actually convert into, which is inacetylcysteine and glutathione, uh, are manufactured in liver, and they're the key components that actually, derived from cysteine, help neutralize the effects of pollutants in the liver, and actually all cells in the body. And we're going to go through some of the research that's been shown on what cysteine is used for. Now, I'm, I'm bringing inacetylcysteine to the forefront because we use it a lot in the store, and I know we have one physician refer it, when people have bronchitis and mucus. And what it does is it literally liquefies mucus uh, in the lungs. And so as we're approaching our winter season, we're in fall right now, and as we approach the season, and I start seeing more and more bronchitis, this is something that can really be helpful in thinning mucus so that the body can uh, clear it much quicker. Now, when we also look at it, it also is a main chelator of certain heavy metals or overdoses of trace minerals, including copper, arsenic, and what's called cobalt. Now, we need a little bit of all these minerals, but with the way our usage of pesticides and a lot of other chemicals, oftentimes we get an abundance of these particular minerals. Remember, I had a TV show, a former one, on copper toxicity. Well, this is one of the key ways uh, to get rid of it. Um, now, when we look at how uh, cysteine is made, there is what is called an essential amino acid by the name of methionine. And when we combine methionine, B6 and B12, along with folic acid, that manufactures L-cysteine and then is converted into liver and becomes inacetylcysteine and glutathione. Now, you also have to have vitamin C present in order for this process to take place. So when a physician says to one of my customers, you can get everything from your food, I want to absolutely scream. As a nutritionist, it is no longer possible with today's food to get adequate amounts of B6, B12, and buffered or ester forms, esterified forms of C in your diet any longer. It ain't gonna happen. And then when you have all the things that deplete, including stress, which uh, depletes B6, B12, and vitamin C like there ain't no tomorrow, and then other medications that deplete, you're gonna end up uh, cysteine deficient, and then diseases such as cancer, uh, particularly liver cancer, which I have seen an ungodly amount recently, probably because of all the soda that's been hitting the liver and slamming it, uh, and all the chemicals that we're seeing increasing. Um, but anyway, uh, it's really, really important that you're doing a really good multivitamin, and please not from a warehouse or a grocery store, 
something that's good, and a form of ester or ester fide, even better, vitamin C, so that you, in combination with your various forms of protein, you can manufacture cysteine. Very, 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 very important. Now, uh, in, uh, assist, uh, inacetylcysteine and cysteine kill bacteria, and there's a lot of research that supports that a lot of colon issues, now remember now, since a lot of people have inflammatory colon issues, they tend to develop, you know, a diverticulitis, inflammation in the colon, infections in the colon. Well, this particular amino acid is very, very important for killing off certain uh, forms of bacteria, particularly the clostridium. Now, what happens when you're on lengthy periods of antibiotics is this clostridium goes like wildfire through the bowel, and it actually can kill you. Um, because this, these become antibiotic resistant. Cysteine and inacetylcysteine kill colostridium in the digestive tract in the colon. Now, the people that are extremely deficient in this, besides not having these vitamins, which is probably 99% of our population other than those that supplement, your vegetarians are going to be more likely to have a depletion of this or inability to manufacture this because, bottom line, they're lacking foods that contain high cysteine levels. Now, this is not to be confused with L-cysteine. And I'll have doctors uh, that confuse and say, oh, don't do inacetylcysteine. No, no, no. It's not the same as L-cysteine, which is an oxidized form of inacetylcysteine or cysteine that can actually cause kidney problems. This is actual cysteine or inacetylcysteine that the liver will convert and manufacture. Now, the food sources, and this is why the vegetarians get into trouble, is from yogurt, duck, wheat germ, pork, turkey, and chicken. Now, there are very few non or, or vegetarian forms of protein that contain all of the uh, essential amino acids for the body to convert into the non-essentials. So, if you're a vegetarian, it's very, very important that you supplement with a variety of different plant-based proteins and make sure you're taking a vegetarian multivitamin, something from a good health food store that can give you a little bit more B6, folic acid, and B12, which you will be deficient in if you don't eat meat sources. You just can't get them from plant-based sources. Now, when we look at the treatment that we use in acetylcysteine for, and it is used as a medicine. If you um, have Tylenol poisoning, that's one of the first things they're going to jump on and give you is in acetylcysteine or sublingual glutathione or in, in, in intravenous uh, glutathione to counteract the effects because when that, the liver takes that, and like I said, it can literally convert these substances to make them inert. In the immune system, it answer, enhances something called um, interleukin-2, which is a um, type of white blood cell that can I, help you identify friend from foe and scavenge things that are, don't belong in the, in the body, in the system, particularly toxins uh, and bacteria as well. So it's very important you have adequate amount of cysteine. Now, as we go through... Half of these I'm going to list on here are um, disorders caused by drugs, okay? So chemotherapies uh, cause a lot of mm, problems in the, uh, in the liver. Oftentimes you'll get liver cancer because uh, they're poisons. They're toxins, and they're hitting the liver, and they're pounding it. And I have doctors who say, oh, don't take your vitamin C. Don't take any supplements because it'll inactivate the chemo. That's a bunch of crap. Um, and I'll say that outright, because none of these have been shown to prevent chemotherapy from doing whatever work it needs to do, if you find it effective at all. But what I can say is inacetylcysteine can prevent liver toxicity caused by certain chemo drugs, and I've listed a couple of chemo drugs. Now, it can also prevent uh, hemorrhagic cystitis. That's an extreme bladder inflammation bladder bleeding type of thing that occurs as a result of chemotherapy as well. As you can probably tell, you, tell, I'm not a big fan of chemotherapy. I just don't see the research backing it up. But if you're going to do it, by all means, please do the best you can to protect your liver as much as you can from the toxicity. Because your liver performs over 500 different functions. If your liver goes, good luck. Good luck on, in just about every avenue of your health. 
and the chemo just slams the heck out of the liver. Now, we also know that alcoholics, when they take as prevention or when they've been diagnosed with liver cirrhosis, N-acetylcysteine in combinations with C can actually reverse cirrhosis of the liver. There's been some really good uh, um, studies on that. In addition, medications that slam the heck out of the liver as well, too, particularly anti-inflammatory drugs, steroidal medications really hit the body very heavily as far as immune. Um, cysteine and N-acetylcysteine can help prevent some of the damage caused by their, the steroidals as well, too. Um, with every drug, you're always going to have a side effect, always, and I don't care what the drug is. And as I tell most of my customers that walk into our health food stores, most supplements, you have side benefits. With most drugs, you have side effects. So this can help lessen the uh, side effects as well, too. Um, oftentimes, uh, as people are uh, having diabetes, they're going to start to approach kidney failure. Uh, inacetylcysteine can also help um, elongate the amount of time that it will take for your liver to go into uh, failure with extreme diabetes. Um, when we talk about certain medications, it can help certain medications elongate or last longer in the liver as well, too. Uh, nitroglycerin, for example, it can help that be more effective and elongate how long the body can use it in order uh, to help prevent certain heart disorders. Lung detox. Now, I mentioned at the start of the show that one of the reasons why I was discussing this drug is because as we approach the season of flus and, and bronchitis, this literally liquefies the uh, mucus in the lungs. There's also been shown that for smokers, it's probably one of the best detoxifying agents for the lungs as well as the liver. So if you're a smoker out there, you should be doing a sustained release inacetylcysteine in combination with your C for all the toxic chemicals. I think there's over 100 toxic chemicals in, in cigarettes that are found. So it would be an excellent idea considering the chemical exposure in that regard. Uh, uh, cystine kidney stones, it can stop the formation of those and the prevention of them coming back again. And drug overdoses, I actually went droop overdoses, uh, but drug overdoses, they tend to really slam the liver. So particularly with, with acid drugs or um, amphetamines will get a real heavy hit on the liver or even morphine. Inacetylcysteine can be very protective and helpful with the liver. H. pylori eradication. Now, remember I mentioned how it can help with clostridium in the colon? It can also, there's a bacteria called H. pylori, which can eat um, little ulcers in the stomach, and it's brought on, it's a bacterial uh, infection, but it can be brought on by acid redox drugs because, you know, the acids help kill off the bacterias, and when you suppress the acids, then the bacterias can go rampant, and this can be very helpful for that as well, too. Now, there's also some topical applications that are being used for this drug as well, too. And it's, you're going to probably see more and more maybe cysteine uh, and inacetylcysteine or, sub, or a glutathione being used in skincare creams because it really aids and abets healing. As I mentioned, uh, ulcers uh, having to do with H. pylori, but topical application of uh, inacetylcysteine or glutathione can aid and abet. And they've got some studies out there also. I believe they were on uh, psoriasis, particularly for the skin issues, with a topical application. And once again, we're not going to have any side effects. The last thing I'd like to leave you with is there were some really good mice studies on inacetylcysteine and liver cancer. Now, you know, I mentioned and I discussed how it was very helpful with the um, toxins and chemicals hitting the body. Once, however, the chemicals have beaten the heck out of the liver, inacetylcysteine in mice studies, they showed that 81% of the mice, 81% were able to either elongate their lives or completely shut down liver cancer with inacetylcysteine. I don't know why anybody who has cancer wouldn't, this wouldn't be their number, one of their number one things that you would hit really heavy and hard with no contraindications with any chemo or radiation, 
which in addition, by the way, it also gives you some protection against radiation exposure as well too in relationship to cancer. I could go on about all the additional things that it does, but I think you can tell in a nutshell, take a good multivitamin. If you've got any of these types of issues, you can take additional amounts of L-cysteine or N-acetylcysteine that can help treat some of the things that I just reviewed. Next, we're going to be moving on to the fitness portion of our show. Thank you very much. Hi, welcome to the fitness portion of our show. And today I'm going to show you a couple of tricep exercises and actually overall arm and shoulder strengthening exercises that you can easily try at home. And I think most people can do them, although maybe the second one might be a little bit more difficult. But what I'd like you to try, first of all, something called a half bridge. And all it is is you put your arms out this way. You have your hands slightly back um, behind your tushy, and you're going to have it a little wider than your shoulders. And you're going to just rise up. Now, you can do this exercise preferably with the hands towards you. You can do it outward, but I prefer it with the hands outward like this. And we're going to rise up. Now, if you look at my triceps, you can see kind of how it's indented. See, triceps should have what is called a pretty head to it. There should be a nice separation. There shouldn't be flabbing in the wind. So this exercise, holding it for anywhere from uh, 10 seconds to 30 seconds, and you can do more than one set, should be helpful in strengthening the triceps and getting rid of the flappy in the wind triceps. Now a more advanced version or something you might want to give a try is what's called reverse tabletop. And yoga position, what you're going to do is you're going to have equal space between your arms and your legs. And hands are in the same position. It's called reverse tabletop. And once again, if you can see that, we've got a separation on that tricep muscle. And you can hold that as long as you can. These are exercises that you can do in front of your television. But once again, you always want to make sure you're warmed up before you start any form of exercise. Next, we're going to be moving on to the research portion of our show. Thank you. Hi, welcome to the research portion of our show, and with us today is Ralph Turciano. And thank you for that intro. Well, guess what? The first thing we'll start off with is fat. Obviously, you may not be aware, there are two different types of fat. There is white fat, which you tend to store, and is usually not seen as being favorable. And there's also something called brown fat, or in this case, they prefer to call it beige fat. Well, the layman term is brown fat. In an article published in the Journal of Pineal Research, pineal, pineal, depends on what you want to call it, they discovered an interesting aspect to something the body produces and something you can consume. If you want to increase the levels of this good fat, why is this fat good, this beige fat or brown fat? is because it helps with the thermogenic ability of the body, meaning raising core body temperature, and also at the same time, too, increasing the number of calories you burn. It's the antithesis or the counter, I should say, to white fat. Supposedly, the more beige or brown fat you have, the less white fat you end up having. Well, it is melatonin. Melatonin that is consumed. Obviously, your body produces melatonin. Some of you may be aware at night when you go to sleep and things like that, and it helps as far as everything from cancer and so forth, as far as fighting. Well, in vegetables and fruits like mustard, goji berry, almonds, sunflower seeds, cardamom, fennel, coriander, and cherries, particularly tart cherry, they tend to be high in melatonin. And what they discovered in the Journal of Pineal Research out of the University of Granada Institute for Neuroscience they discovered that basically melatonin increases the presence of beige fat. We'll use the word beige from now on since they are pretty much adamant in using the word beige and not brown. And they found out it has metabolic benefits in treating diabetes and hyperlipidemia. They said it is also found in quantities of small fruits and vegetables as we discussed and is pharmacologically, pharmacologically has a safe profile, melatonin. It is a potential useful tool both in its own right 
and an aid to complement or I should say the treatment of obesity. Yes, they said itself. Melatonin can be actually utilized in the treatment of obesity, meaning without restriction of calories, without basically necessarily changing diet per se, even though it does help, melatonin helps raise that metabolism. A study coordinated by the University of Granada, a lecturer, Ahmed Ajil, showed the chronic administration of melatonin, chronic meaning often, sensitizes the thermogenic effect to, or I should say, of the exposure to cold, heightens the thermogenic effect of exercise, meaning you get more bang for your buck when you go to work out, therefore constitutes excellent therapy against obesity, as if obesity is a disease. The fact is that one of the key differences between beige fat, otherwise known to us laymen as brown fat, which appears when administrated melatonin and white fat is that beige fat cells, or I should say beige fat cell mitochondria, expresses levels of a protein called UCP1, responsible for burning calories and generating heat, which makes you wonder, because when your sleep patterns are all messed off, your melatonin levels tend to go down. Or if you're a night shift worker, your melatonin levels tend to go down, meaning that lack of sleep and or work shift can be responsible for increasing the likelihood of obesity due to lower levels of melatonin because it's messing with your circadian rhythms and the pineal gland, da 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 And they said, given the importance of this discovery, the researchers are confident they will obtain the funding needed to continue their work. Yeah, we'll see if that happens. However, though, I'm grateful for the University of Granada and the Journal of Penal Research to bring in the, to our attention the benefits of melatonin as far as a new tool in the fight against obesity. Good work, guys. I appreciate that. And another excellent job. Now, this one I always kind of wonder about because you expect news like this to be in the news. But often I think they utilize words which are too big for the teleprompters and most of these newscasters. And this one's important because it has to do with multiple sclerosis, or MS. They discovered or an article titled, Mouse Studies Reveal Promising Vitamin D-Based Treatment for MS. And I mean more than promising. That's why I'm bringing it up. And this was published in the Journal of Neuroimmunology. Pretty respected journal. You'd expect news like this to have made the news somewhere at some time since it came out over a week and a half ago, being this September 30, 2013. Basically, the University of Wisconsin and Madison Biochemist has discovered a promising vitamin D-based treatment that can halt, and this is their words, and even reverse the course of the disease in, model, in animal models. The treatment involves uh, basically, the treatment involves giving animals that exhibit MS symptoms a single dose of a type of vitamin D called calcitriol. Calcitriol. Not or calciferol or calciferol, but calcitriol, which is an active hormone of vitamin D. And followed by the ongoing vitamin D supplements through the diet. The protocol is basically mentioned in the Journal of Neuroimmunology. Again, this is pretty groundbreaking stuff because it should make MS go away. If you're one of the few lucky individuals that actually watch this show, consider yourself fortunate, because I was fortunate enough to run across the study itself. And this gives you an idea how powerful the impact is. Now, calcitriol, being the hormone metabolite of vitamin D, is not available without, obviously, a prescription. It's pretty much a pretty hardcore form of vitamin D. They said, but let me go more. This study was funded also by the National Multiple Sclerosis Society. Thank you. The team compared various vitamin D treatments to standard MS drugs. In each case, vitamin D beat every single MS drug that was out there. Mice that received them showed fewer physical symptoms and cellular signs of aging. First, Hayes' team, which is the researcher, compared the effectiveness of a single dose uh, basically calcitriol to what was comparable dose of glucocor uh, glucocorticoid drugs. Now administered MS patients who experienced bad neurological episodes. Calcitriol came out ahead, inducing a nine-day remission in 92% of the animals on average versus a six-day remission in 
on the glutocorticoid, ah, glutocorticoid drug regime. And guess how much cheaper it is. Think your universal health care coverage is going to mention anything about this? Let's see. All right. Next, Hayes team tried a weekly dose just to see what's happened. Let's give a little bit more of the Casitrol. They found that a weekly dose reversed the disease and sustained remission indefinitely. However, calcitriol is kind of a hardcore drug and can raise calcium levels in the blood pretty significantly. So they wanted to make it and balance it out a little safer. So this is what they did. They said they took away this biological sledgehammer, the calcitriol, and they only gave one dose, just one dose. And then they followed with vitamin D supplements. The one-two punch was a runaway success. How successful in treating MS? Well, no words, 100% response rate. 100% response rate in regards to MS. That's why this should be making TV news. But I guess we're more uh, interested in what Miley Cyrus does on the weekends. Hayes believe that the calcitrol may cause the autoimmune cells attacking the nerve cells myelin coating to die while the vitamin D prevents the new autoimmune cells from taking their place. So what happens? They give you the calcitriol once, it causes them to die. The vitamin D supplements, which you can pick up in any health food store, keeps them away. Now, an interesting thing that the researchers said, which I really like towards the end, and they said, it is my hope that one day doctors will be able to say, we're going to give you this, we are going to give you an oral calcitriol dose, vitamin D, the hormone vitamin D, and ramp up with the vitamin D in your diet. And then we're going to follow you closely over the next few months. You're just going to have one more neurological episode, and then there'll be the end of it. That is my dream. That's what the doctor said who did the research on that. That's a pretty spectacular dream. Again, this happened in the news a few weeks ago. Let's see if it, I should say not news, I should say research. Let's see if it makes it to any of your local news channels or national news channels. It'd be pretty interesting to see. However, again, if I look back in 2004, there was an interesting article on curcumin or turmeric in regards to reversing cystic fibrosis. And still to this day, 2004, nine years later, haven't seen one iota of it. I think my time is about up. Is that correct? 30 seconds? Yep, sounds good. And thank you very much for the time and hope to see you guys next time. Thank you very much, Ralph. Once again, thank you for joining our show. Do your research, and as you hear things like on turmeric and, and the vitamin D, let your friends know. Share it with your doctors. Hopefully, maybe it'll make a difference with them. Have a great night. Thank you very much for joining our show.